Remember 2015? It was a simpler time. Volkswagen had just got caught lying about their emission standards, which really shouldn't be a surprise for anyone who looks up what Volkswagen was doing between 1933 and 1945. Jalil Okafer looked like he could be the greatest basketball player to ever basketball ever. LOL. And if you ask someone to put on a mask, you wouldn't get yelled at with conspiracies of masks make you sterile. Ah much simpler times. Oh, and we met this dude, Martin Shkreli, a man that looks like a Pinocchio wished to be a real boy after learning what white privilege is. In 2015, this excised genital wart became infamous when his company took a medication meant for AIDS patients and increased the price by over 5,000%. This was especially more egregious when Daraprim, a drug invented in 1953 but had no generic version, was made by high schoolers in Australia to make a point. They said unlike the $750 per pill Daraprim was sold for, they could afford to sell their Breaking Bad version for $2. But when you think about it, upping the price of a life-saving medication that used to cost $13 by over 5,000% is disgusting. It's cruel, and frankly, it's the most American thing ever. Which brings us to the reason you clicked on this video. The world's most expensive drug ever. Marketed Zol Zolgungen. Ho ho hold on, hold on. Zolgensma. There we go. The price for this IV medication, I shit you not, is averaged at $2.1 million in the US per dose. Yeah, you heard me. A company is charging someone the same price as this three bedroom, three bath, two car garage mansion in Beverly Hills for medication. Which brings us to the real question of this video. Why the fuck is a $2 million medication a thing? First off, a little background. Zolgensma is used to treat a very rare yet exceedingly deadly childhood disease called spinal muscular atrophy. This disease typically leads to an infant's death before the age of two. And those who live with the disease into childhood will usually need lifelong help with walking, eating, and other bodily functions. This disease, no matter how rare, deserves concrete medical therapy that can help change people's lives. But this brings me back to why is this drug over $2 million? For this, I think it's important to compare Zolgensma to other drugs used to treat spinal muscular atrophy or SMA. The first drug ever invented was Spin... Ugh, fuck me. Why can't they just name these things something I can actually pronounce? Spin Raza. This medication is injected directly into the spine every four months and costs $750,000 for the first year and $350,000 a year after that. It can be taken by adults and children. A few years later came Zolgensma, which as we said, costs over $2 million and only needs to be administered once. If given early enough before symptoms, it has even shown signs of curing SMA. However, it can only be given to those under two years old. Both of these medications are considered orphan drugs, which means they're only used for rare diseases and get fast-tracked by the FDA. Unlike boner pills meant to get millions of Bob Dole types to fill Randy, orphan drugs are meant for diseases with less than 200,000 people suffering from it. Which brings us to our first dilemma. Those two medications I listed, those are the only drugs on the market for SMA right now, meaning they can charge whatever they want. And why wouldn't they? For people suffering with SMA or have children with SMA, they would want their insurance to pay any price. I don't even have SMA and I want my insurance to pay that for them. But because we live in the real world, I thought I would remind you that insurance really sucks at actually caring if people live or die. Only one third of the top 30 US insurance companies have made decisions regarding whether they will cover Zolgensma. And those who have created policies like Blue Cross Blue Shield will have severe restrictions like Horizon Blue Cross of New Jersey, who won't allow those who have used Spinraza, the drug that can't cure SMA, to switch to Zolgensma, the drug that has shown evidence of curing this death disease. So what is Novartis, the maker of Zolgensma, doing to make the drug more affordable for insurers? Honestly, nothing really. Currently, they are offering insurers the option of paying $425,000 per year over five years in installments. And considering these are the same for-profit public companies that pay doctors to reject claims without ever reading them, I very much doubt you are getting them to cough up $425,000 per year without a fight. So again, why is Novartis charging what the 27th pick in the NBA draft gets paid? Paid in his first year for their life-saving drug. P.S. Congrats to Nick Smith Jr., the 27th pick this year for getting drafted by the Charlotte Hornets, a team so bad Michael Jordan gave up on them. A proponent of this might claim it takes billions of dollars and over a decade before a drug can even make it to market, which is true. The NIH found costs can be as low as $350 million per drug and go as high as $2.8 billion. And that's not including the drugs that don't make it, as only 14% of all drugs developed are ever approved. But while everything I just said is true, 
let's look at other facts. As an orphan drug, Zolgensma would have been fast-tracked by the FDA and allowed to get through the process at a much quicker pace. This is especially true for orphan drugs meant for children. In fact, this may have been proven even more true when it was later discovered that the company manipulated data and didn't tell anyone about it until after the drug was approved. And as for the costs involved, it should be noted it is very rare for drug companies to bear this cost themselves. In the case of Zolgensma, the National Institutes of Health funded more than $450 million in grants, aka taxpayer money, not to mention a bunch of charities and nonprofits who donated, such as Cure SMA and the Gwendolyn Strong Foundation. You know, anytime you see an apology video from a disgraced YouTuber saying all the money they get from the video will go to cancer research, the money goes to one of these charities who may use it to try and help drug companies find a cure or treatment. And after all the money they received, they still stuck a $2 million price tag on this life-changing drug. And to be perfectly honest, I don't know how I should feel. Full disclosure, my kidney transplant is kept alive by a drug sold by Novartis, who is also the maker of Zolgensma. My kidney transplant drug is $5,000 a month in its generic form. $5,000. That's the same price as a 2010 Chevy Cobalt, a car once dubbed by Driver Monthly magazine as the reason to start riding a bike instead. And that $5,000 every month is for a drug listed as an essential medication by the World Health Organization and is used on all forms of transplants as well as six different forms of cancer. But it keeps me alive. And I like being alive. It's pretty cool. So the question is, should we as a society allow drugs to be this expensive? Just to get nerdy for two seconds, spinal muscular atrophy is estimated to affect one in every 11,000 births. There are about 3.6 million births in the U.S. every year, meaning conservatively, 360 babies will sadly be diagnosed with SMA every year. If every child was treated at the current Zolgensma price, that's $756 million spent just in the U.S. Expand that out to the rest of the world, that's 14,000 new cases every year around the globe, with over 28 billion dollars spent just on this one drug. That's the equivalent of spending the entire GDP of Cyprus or Zimbabwe every year on Zolgensma. So I ask you, should drugs be this expensive? Let me know down in the comments below and let's get a healthy debate going.